All right, fellas, what's up? So um, I'm coming at you with yet again another review. This time it is on the ASP Sentry Baton uh, Breakaway Scabbard purchased separately. Um, uh, specification wise, it is nine inches closed and open. I don't want to snap it all the way open just yet. It is 26 inches um, when uh, fully extended. The first two pieces are made out of 4130 steel, you know, just very, very heavy steel. It's, um, you know, it's a uh, powder coated, I think. With, I might have misread it, but I think the term is black nickel. I might have misread that. You, you'd have to check the, uh, the specifications on this to, uh, to know. But to my understanding, it was, you know, called black nickel. Essentially, it is, uh, you know, just a, a black uh, coating that is uh, for prevention of rust, corrosion, stuff like that. Um, absolutely devastating as, uh, as an impact weapon. In fact, um, you know, unlike my walking sticks, which I've done many reviews and, uh, and videos on, uh, these do not serve, these are not multi-purpose tools. Uh, walking those cold steel walking aids are you know walking aids but can also be used as uh, as bludgeons if need be there is no uh, there is absolutely no question about what these are for these are designed with one purpose and only one purpose in mind which is uh, you know to, to use as a as a baton so uh, legality wise Texas is a yes no state Meaning that uh, they're not going to restrict the sales of these babies. I mean, which is why I was able to buy one at a at an army surplus, no questions asked. However, uh, it is not legal to own these weapons if you are not in your house or your car. That's uh, Texas Penal Code Section forty six point oh two. If you guys want to uh, want to check it out, and if you decide to own one but are worried about uh, getting hassled from the police, so. <clears throat> uh, with that in mind, um, uh, that you know, uh, if you are, they're available uh, online. If they're not at any of your local uh, local stores, they are available online. If they can't send to your state, you're, they're probably outlawed altogether. But just because they can send it to your state, may not make it 100% uh, legal to own. Uh, like I said, you might live in a yes/no state, so. Do check before ordering them, and if you get busted for having one because it's a crime to own one, don't even think of blaming me. So, um, just to open it, just a real simple, you know, flick of the wrist. As I had mentioned, this is one of the, uh, I guess it is the longest of the uh, of the models. It's 16, 21, and 26, I believe are the uh, the standard heights or the, the standard heights the standard lengths excuse me um, once again these are absolutely frightening I mean they look small they look kind of thin but this is really heavy uh, this is really heavy really sturdy steel it's got some weight to it even a slight little flick on a soft area like uh, like your arm or your leg just like a slight little I don't even want to do it to myself but like a little Something like that. I mean, it will cause considerable uh, pain. Um, <clears throat> something I do feel compelled to inform people about uh, because these weapons, you know, like I said, these uh, are impact weapons with only one purpose in mind, and that is to, to use them as, uh, you know, as, as clubs, as batons, as nightsticks. Um, you know, in law enforcement, they are taught uh, a strike pattern. Of, you know, it's like a, a force continuum, if you will. It uh, basically teaches you that there are primary targets um, to uh, initially strike if the subject is being combative, but if deadly force is not justified. And should the, uh, should the subject continue to be combative, there's some secondary targets on the body that they're authorized to hit if uh, the, hitting the primary targets doesn't work. 
And last but not least, you basically got what I call the last resort targets. If the guy will just not stop, uh, you know, acting in a hostile manner, you can basically, uh, you know, aim for the places that uh, that are the, the places that it can, you know, can be deadly uh, to be hit: the uh, kidneys, the spine, the face, the head, uh, the sternum, I believe. So uh, I feel that. Uh, and this is just my own personal opinion, but I do feel that if I'm going to be promoting this product, I should at least emphasize, uh, you know, how they should be used because, you know, these things are no joke. These things can really do some damage if you decide to use them in self-defense. Um, they're very weighty. They will welt a soft area and they will break uh, any bone that they hit if swung hard enough. So... Basically, the uh, the strike pattern that police officers are uh, traditionally taught is uh, first they're the primary targets. That's basically the meaty part of your limbs, the meaty part of your bottom leg, the meaty part of your top leg, the meaty part of your uh, lower arm, the meaty part of your upper arm. Uh, obviously, a guy cannot uh, punch or kick you or lunge at you if. Uh, if his uh, arm or leg is in is in severe pain, you know, I mean, I hate to rip off uh, Karate Kid 3, but, you know, if a man can't stand, a man can't fight. Um, so, uh, generally, I mean, you know, let's just, you know, hitting, you know, hitting a, a normal person in the arm or leg hard enough, it will take the wind out of them. But let's just say the guy's just hopped up on drugs or just so enraged that he doesn't feel nothing then you got one of the secondary targets that consists of the more bony parts uh, the, the harder areas of the body uh, the knees front and back elbows front and back uh, the majority of the uh, of the torso area I think the collarbone I might be wrong about that um, the hands the feet, uh, areas like that, uh, you know, those are the secondary targets. Um, those are uh, what the officer will jump to if the guy's still being violent after you hit him in the, the softer areas. And last but not least, once again, I mean, I don't call these the last resort areas for nothing because you hit, you know, the last resort areas, if you hit them, there's a very good chance that it will kill or cripple uh, the attacker. The uh, final resort areas, the, you know, they consist of uh, the sternum, the face, the head, the, uh, uh, the kidneys and the spine. I mean... You know, those are uh, those are areas that have hit hard enough. It's going to do some severe damage. It might even, uh, you know, it, it might even kill the individual. So, uh, like I said, those are absolute last resort areas. You know, uh, you uh, <clears throat> you know, you kind of have to. If God forbid, you have to use these uh, in self defense. This is something that you really, really, really need to take into consideration. Um, you know, because even if it is self-defense, uh, they'll, they'll still try and take you to court for it. it it's just uh, how it's got to be. You'll still get hooked and booked. You'll still have a court date set. And uh, you're going to have to prove that you did everything in your power to, uh, you know, not let it get to the point that it got. Um, so, uh, in order to close this baby, it's real simple. You're not going to be able to see it on camera. I got like a, a piece of, uh, of concrete here, but typically to close these, you tap them uh, on concrete like so, kind of like a little, you know, fairy wand tap or something. You rotate it by about 90 degrees or so and tap it again. And then just driving it down, uh, you're able to close it. 
down. Kind of a ricochet there, but still got it closed. So uh, there you have it. You know, these are uh, very, very effective in terms of self-defense. I highly recommend, just like I said, check your local laws before getting them. So uh, that's all I got to say about that. Questions or comments, you all do know the drill. Peace out, fellas.